Bologna Business School is an international community of ideas, people, networks, and projects. The Business School of the University of Bologna was born to form a new generation of business leaders able to lead the digital transformation. Our keywords are interdisciplinary, internationalization, corporate inclusion. BBS wants to provide an education to generate changes which have a positive impact on individuals and businesses. At Bologna Business School, we believe in the transforming power of competence, passion and courage, and in the possibility of making things happen. Global MBAs Full-time Masters in Italian and English Executive Masters Open and Custom Programs Thanks to the deep connection with the University of Bologna and the industry champions, BBS promotes the creation of open and effective interpersonal networks and leadership of value and inspiration. The heart of Bologna Business School is Villa Guastavillani, a magnificent 16th century palace rising on the Bologna's hills, in the heart of one of the most important regions of Italy. Bologna is art, technology, flavors, tourism, fashion, and much more. Bologna Business School, the privilege of studying management immersed in art, history, and nature. Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to the fifth Entrepreneurial Ecosystem Day at Bologna Business School, the business school of the University of Bologna. My name is Riccardo Fini. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Management and Entrepreneurship at the University of Bologna and the Director of the Entrepreneurship Hub at BBS. Today, here at BBS, more than 70 startups will engage our community of students and alumni the aim is to connect the vibrant, regional, innovative ecosystem with our BBS network of current and former students to facilitate the dissemination of innovative ideas and support the launch of new projects between startups and our community. On the one hand, startups might indeed look for human and social capital, resources and guidance. The network of our business school might play a key role in providing access to them. On the other hand, master's students might look at entrepreneurship with interest. Indeed, some of them are or will be entrepreneurs themselves. Some others will be asked to lead existing organizations. Either way, entrepreneurial mindsets will be needed to navigate these unpredictable times. So today, by creating such a connection between students, entrepreneurs, managers, and investors, we take a step further to foster and inspire the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship in our region. And now talking about inspiration, let me introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Alec Ross, an entrepreneur, an investor, and a great mind that is now with us here at BBS. Without further ado, Alec, the screen is yours. Benvenuti tutti. My name is Alec Ross. I'm a distinguished visiting professor here at Bologna Business School. And part of why I was excited to join the faculty here at BBS was because of the startup ecosystem here. Startups imagine and invent the future. It's the community that really reshapes the world in the way that we want it to be. 
And people who lead startups, people who work at startups, they don't see the world as it is. They see the world as they want it to be. And part of what excites me about Startup Day, an annual event that we are so pleased to host here at Bologna Business School, is that it brings together an ever-growing ecosystem. You know, we're here in Bologna, we're here in Emilia Romagna, which is a place of, frankly, fairly remarkable entrepreneurship. Uh, our Motor Valley, our agricultural sector, our manufacturing sector, increasingly our technology sector, our life sciences sector. Emilia Romagna is one of Italy's great strengths. It's one of Europe's great strengths. And what's wonderful about it is not just the historic companies that come out of this region, a lot of whose names you know, uh, but also increasingly how people are now choosing to turn to the startup world. And these are my own roots. When I was a young man of 28 years old, I started a company in a basement. And look, it's never easy. It's never easy to start a new company. But I think that in moments like this, as was the case after World War II, it's critical for all of us to use entrepreneurship as a way to positively reshape the world. We need to develop new sources of wealth, new sources of employment. And I really believe that that is gonna come from the startup world. It's gonna come from you. Uh, after the Second World War, Italy, speaking about Italy for a moment, was in shatters. Uh, many of the cities had been destroyed. People were coming, the men were coming back from war. Uh, and it was at this moment that out of, the cre out of the destruction of the war was the creation of industrial Italy. I think the Spanish artist Pablo Picasso described this better than any economist ever could when he said every act of creation begins with an act of destruction. Now we are in what I hope, what I really hope, is the last quarter, the last six months, at least the last year of COVID. And out of the destruction of COVID, if we are going to come out of this stronger, it's going to become because of the creation that comes from entrepreneurship and it comes from our startup community. Let me take a few moments to describe some of what I believe to be the landscape for startups right now. First of all, data. Land was the raw mater material of the agricultural age. Iron was the raw material of the industrial age. I'm not saying that everybody needs to be a big data company or technology company, not at all. But I do think that in the same way during the industrial age, people would think about the raw materials of iron and other natural resources as a way of building the new industrial age products. So too, whether you're working in food, whether you're working in fashion, whatever you're working in, you need to have a data strategy. You need to understand that data is a very powerful raw material, that if you know how to use it, it can build real value. I think about iron. Iron sitting under a mountain in its raw form of iron ore is not, doesn't serve any necessary purposes. But iron that people know how to draw out of the earth and build into factories and tools that go into our factory, it can become remarkably powerful. This is in many ways how I think about data. 90% of the world's information, 90% of the world's data has been produced in the last two years. We are producing oceans worth of data. But if you don't know how to draw the harvest out of that ocean, and if you don't know how to organize it, you can't really have a strategy. So whatever field you're working in, I would think, uh, I would think first and foremost about how you can utilize data as a strategy. And the second thing I would point to is for those of you who are leaders of startups, those of you who are guiding your companies in these very difficult days, 
recognize that there are a new set of skills, a new set of executive competences that you're going to have to have to be able to sort of steer these companies in an effective way. It's, it's very non-hierarchical. You cannot just give instructions and then the people then follow the instructions. You're not gonna be able to get everybody around the same table and sort of work things out together. So for those of you that lead these companies, you're going to have to place a very high premium on your emotional intelligence, your understanding how to apply behavioral psychology to work with a workforce that might be increasingly distributed. And you also have to recognize that you know, the days of sitting down and having a lunch or having a dinner with your key customers, with your audience, getting to know people at conferences, that's a lot more difficult right now. So what does this mean? What this means is your ability to get intelligence, your ability to listen and learn from your potential customer base is dramatically different now than it was previously. You know, when we were born, God only gave us one mouth, but he gave us two ears. And understanding how to draw in information, understanding how to listen uh, in these times of COVID is gonna be really important and oftentimes very difficult. Let me take a moment to talk about Italy. Uh, it's a big world out there. Almost 8 billion people in 196 countries. And it oftentimes can feel like a world dominated by China and the United States. So in this world, what about Europe? What about Italy? What and where can Italian startups compete and succeed in this big world of the United States, of China, of the UK, of Germany? How can young entrepreneurs in Italy, and Im in Italy imagine and invent the future? Let me point to a few sectors where I think there's huge opportunity with the following overlay. Uh, the 25 years of digitization produced trillions, trillions of euros of economic activity and wealth creation. There are examples of Italian startups doing well in that environment, but for the most part, the last 25 years have been a little tough in the startup world in Italy. If we're to look at the next 10 years though, where is the next trillion euro opportunity? Well, one area that I would point to is sustainability. And sustainability as an overlay. So sustainability within food and wine, sustainability uh, within fashion, sustainability within automotive. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this for a moment. Uh, agriculture is one of the most carbon emissions intensive industries in the world. Uh, you know, it, Italy has deep, deep subject matter expertise in food and wine. And as our international treaties, as our regulations push us increasingly into sustainable farming methods, uh, the pioneers here, uh, who oftentimes I think will have domain expertise like we find in Italy, will really be the leaders in the startup world in the food and wine, in food and wine. Let me give an example that I can, that I can point to now that I think of inside one of Italy's oldest, one of Italy's older wineries, Gaia. Uh, I have a friend there, a young woman named Rosanna Gaia. Everybody's heard of her father, Angelo, this great pioneer of wine, but Rosanna, young woman, I think under 40 years of old, under 40 years old, explained to me that the, because of climate change, the weather of North Africa is now the weather of Sicily. The weather of Sicily is now the weather of Rome. The weather of Rome is now the weather of, of Northern Italy. And in the face of this, our wineries are facing really difficult challenges uh, to be able to grow grapes and harvest them in ways consistent with producing the world's best wine. And so Rosanna Gaia uh, has explained to me how they are pioneering new, new ways of maintaining the the grapes in the fields and harvesting using highly innovative ways. For those of you who work in food and wine, whatever aspect of it, thinking about how to integrate scalable sustainability solutions is gonna create billions 
of euros of effect. Uh, I also think about automotive. We are going from a world of dirty fossil fuels increasingly to green, clean technologies. You know, I give you the example of Tesla. People thought Elon Musk was crazy. But Cisco, when he started Tesla and he started setting those goals, I got news for you. Elon Musk is brilliant, but what his real brilliance is, is his courage, his willingness to set an aggressive goal and then attack that goal. There's a lot more expertise in automotive in Emilia Romagna and in Italy than there is in Silicon Valley. But what we need is the courage, the willingness to invest in startups in this field, so that in the same way that automotive innovation during the industrial age came out of the Motor Valley, so too can it come out of Italy. But we need the startups to be working in this area. And then finally, I would point to fashion. People don't normally think of fashion as sort of the a big industry in terms of in terms of carbon emissions or climate change, but guess what? Uh, it actually accounts for about between 10 and 20 percent of global carbon emissions. It, it, what that effectively means is that it has a bigger impact than airplanes, than shipping, than some, just about all industries in terms of carbon emissions and wastewater. There are young entrepreneurs. There are startups now who are thinking about how we can align values, stakeholder values of the new generations of younger Italians, younger Europeans, younger citizens of the world, and how we can produce beautiful clothing, beautiful fashion for the future that is consistent with the values of stewarding this earth. So the theme that I would push a lot of you on is to think about sustainability, not just as something where you know, we've got to create new batteries, we've got to create new, new forms of clean energy, but also think about how you can use the breakthrough innovations that are taking place in energy and apply them into fields of Italian expertise, food and wine, agriculture, fashion, automotive, and so many more. Let me give some final pieces of advice. Uh, you know, look, I'm a former startup founder myself. I now am a partner in a venture capital fund with about $400 million in assets under management. And, you know, going on, you know, about 20 startup investments that we've made in incredible companies. Let me give you just a couple insights from my perspective, both as a startup or myself, as well as somebody who's investing hundreds of millions of dollars into, into you. First of all, nothing is more important than human capital. Uh, the relationships that you can build, the employees that you can bring onto your team, the networks that you construct are critical. Nobody sits in a basement and just creates a multi-billion dollar startup on their own. There are no self-made men or women. You have to very, very deliberately and very, very aggressively develop your human capital. Related to this, don't let yesterday's biases color your company's future. It's my honest belief that the companies that do the most to create space for women on their teams are gonna be among those that compete and succeed the most effectively. Number three, don't think about just an IPO as the measure of success of what a startup is. There are lots of ways of building a successful startup. If you build products or services that are valued in the market, that are backed up by a cash flow positive, that backed up by a cash flow, flow positive margin, you can develop a company that maybe can go to IPO maybe can be acquired, maybe can become the next generation of privately held Italian or global company uh, that can employ lots of people and be passed on from generation to generation. But don't go into your work thinking about how you're going to get out 
of your work. Focus on the product, focus on your customers, focus on your team. Do not focus on how you're going to finish. If you focus on how you're going to finish, you're probably not going to end up there. And then last thing, let me bring up something that I think is critically important. Falimento, failure. Do not fear failure. If anything, the single biggest indicator of success in the startup world, coraggio, courage. Uh, you know, I am a big believer in the view that a lot of the greatest startups in the world are not just shaped by their product, they're not just shaped by the engineering, they're not just shaped by the business model, but they are shaped by vision with courage to back it up. And I'm inspired by the words of Theodore Roosevelt, who said, it's far better to dare mighty deeds, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much, because they live in a sort of gray twilight, un crepusculo grigio, that knows neither victory nor defeat. So courage, courage is the indispensable element uh, for any startup CEO. And I'm not deploying any of my hundreds of millions of dollars into any startup where I don't see in the eyes of the entrepreneur that courage, that focus, that almost religious approach to executing on the vision. Thank you all and enjoy your time and what I'm sure will be a terrific opportunity here. Thank you very much, Alec, for your inspiring words. Start up indeed, imagine and invent the future. Entrepreneurs indeed design the future they want to live in. In doing so, entrepreneurs leverage their skills, courage and vision. The context also plays a key role in creating the right conditions for entrepreneurship to unfold. So both individual and contextual factors become key ingredients of any entrepreneurial journey. As some of these features apply to all kinds and types of entrepreneurship, there might be some industry-specific aspects worth considering. In today's event, we took to heart such thing designing it with a strong industry focus. Specifically, from 4.30 to 5.30, we'll ask the parallel sessions focusing on agri-food, chaired by Ludovica Leone, automation and automotive, chaired by Federico Munari, design, fashion, and luxury goods, chaired by Angelo Manaresi, digital services and ICT, chaired by Andrea Pia, and sustainability chaired by Matteo Mura. All meetings are hosted on Microsoft Teams. You can join the virtual rooms by clicking the hyperlinks just below this screen. Then from 5.30 to 7.30, we'll ask the one-to-one -one meetings between the startups and the BBS network. Each meeting will last 15 minutes and has to be pre-booked. To do so, you should enter the given startups page on this website, book your preferred slot, and access the startups team channel at the scheduled time. The startups team channels are visible to those who have booked the one-to-one -one meetings only. Please be on time and leave the room once your allocated time has expired. Furthermore, on top of this screen, you may also find a link to your agenda. If you have booked some one-to-one -one meetings, you'll find them in there. Last but not least, earlier today, you have received an email including all practical information you might need. And should you have any questions, please get in touch with our great BBS team. And let me now share a few concluding words. So doing business in these puzzling times, it's for sure challenging and trying. And to deliver quality and inspiring education is no exception. But here at BBS, with almost 1,700 new students, 
with brand new facilities in the Villa Guastavillani and Fiera district campuses and the launch of the BBS alumni community featuring the Quarant Talks and the REACT Innovation Program, we are ready and fully equipped to take on the challenge together. I wish you a great, fun, inspiring and productive day. Arrivederci from Villa Guastavillani, home of the Bologna Business School, the business school of the University of Bologna.